we can begin. Okay, so three minutes a piece for opening statements. Val's gonna do hers a second time. Thank you very much. And then Adam's going to do his and Dawn is going to do hers. So why don't we start with Val? All right, so I thanked everyone before and I'll thank everyone again who was involved in organizing this. Um, I'm very grateful. Um, and so for those of you that don't know me, I'm Valerie Ladakis, a full professor in the Department of Student Personnel Services. And what motivates me to run for vice president and classroom professional faculty is my immense desire to build a stronger NCCFT by putting back the community where it belongs, to restore accountability and transparency important values of an ethical leader. There is definitely room for improvement. We all want the same thing, safe working conditions, fair and equitable treatment, respect, being valued and having a sense of self-worth. We need leadership with a new approach. The current approach, which is to accept college interpretation of our contract, finances and priorities has resulted in losing a lot of members and programs and forcing us to work in unhealthy conditions for longer hours. The college has even gone as far as hiring an expensive private investigator to follow members and take pictures of them at home. They then use this evidence to scare members into resigning without the benefit of the contract required progressive discipline process. They go straight to the top the harshest punishment to let one go. Presently, everyone is easily dispensable. Speaking the same language with the administration defeats the purpose of the NCCFD. That's not what a union is all about. We need to be effective communicators and have backbone to have a win-win situation. Professionals being told what to do and how to do it is unacceptable. It seems to me that we have been reactive instead of proactive. That's all. Thank you, Val. And thanks for doing it over. Okay, the second person who's presenting today is Adam. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I just wanted to give a quick thanks to Vandor and the Elections Committee, to Susan and the Tellers Committee, and to Audrey. NCCFT's office manager. I didn't realize how much goes into organizing and conducting these elections. So their efforts should not be overlooked. Um, I'd also like to thank, it kind of sounds strange, past members of the NCCFT leadership team um, who fought for our contract and some of whom have looked out for me on more than one occasion. Um, hi everyone, I'm Adam Polipshin. I'm a level three technologist in the Office of Distance Education. I've been with the college for almost 15 years. However, my history with the college goes back much further. My mother was part of the first graduating classes at NCC and uh, worked here as a technical assistant for almost 40 years. Um, she got out alive, apparently. Um, during this time, she met my father while he was working for the evening dean. And consequently, like my mother, my um, brother before me, I also graduated from NCC. Um, some of my duties help in, uh, include helping faculty with their instructional design and technology needs related to Blackboard. I'm a system admin for Kaltura, the video repository we use to house our faculty authored videos. And at the start of the semester, I'm the one that sends your students information on how to log into your Blackboard courses in a timely fashion. Prior to NCC, I co-founded a tech startup that provided high-end communication solutions to Fortune 500 companies, um, an experience which allowed me to sharpen my negotiation skills against executives from the likes of Disney, General Electric, and Cadbury Schweppes. Despite my technical background, I'm also a bit of an academic. Um, I have a master's degree from Penn State, and I'm nearing the end of a PhD program at UB, my, where my research is focused on the use of educational data mining and psychometrics to inform learning pathways. I've also co-authored a book chapter, as well as empirical research articles. My campus-wide service includes time spent on the Educational Resources Committee, the Committee for Persons with Disabilities, the Assessment Committee, and the Student Enrollment Management Committee. And I've also served on the PFU's Advisory Committee as well as various search committees. I'm running in part because the NCCFT leadership uh, team needs, a more act, needs to more accurately reflect the diversity of its members. 
especially members whose positions are constantly being undermined and threatened. Over the past few years, I've seen non-classroom faculty pushed out, some even with tenure. Faced with insurmountable workloads and punitive treatment, I've also seen technologists assess, uh, accept positions elsewhere. And at this very moment, some are being transferred to new departments and having their job descriptions rewritten. Like you, these are faculty keeping this place going. Like you, they're serving as the glue binding the educational objectives and support services that make this place run. And I'm running to give these individuals a voice and make sure that the glue holds. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. The next person who we all know is Dawn Smith. Unmute yourself, please. Thank you. Uh, I also would like to thank the committee um, for all the hard work to pull this off. I know it was a huge task. So for those who don't know me, I'm Dawn Smith. I work as a TA in the Center for Students with Disabilities, a unit of student personnel services. I coordinate and proctor exams for students who require accommodations. I worked at the college since 2000 and been a full-time faculty member in SPS since 2008. I'm a feet on the ground, hard worker, what you see is what you get. My actions are what's important. With both my CSD and union experiences, I know how to stay calm in challenging, stressful situations, think creatively to find solutions, and work collegially with all types of personalities. I also know how important it is to listen to all viewpoints before making a final decision. I'm very comfortable going directly to the source when looking for answers. I have had the pleasure of being your vice president before, from uh, June 2015 to December 2020. I was asked to step back on June 1st, 2021, when the then current VP for non-classroom professional faculty stepped down. I agreed to come back as your acting vice president and now to run for the position because I'm passionate that there must be a strong non-classroom voice on the NCCFT executive committee someone who was able to put in words and put in the work and the many hours needed to ensure our members and contractual rights are protected. Someone who will be a voice, not only to my fellow executive committee members, but to the administration to absorb, to ensure the NCCFD members' concerns are heard. Trust me when I tell you the entire executive committee works very diligently to understand and protect the contract for all members. But it's so important for the committee to hear all sides of an issue for a greater understanding. Some of you saw me on campus two summers ago and this summer to address faculty concerns regarding health and safety issues due to COVID. I also have been walking around taking pictures of mold to help remedy the mold situation. I've served on various union committees, served as liaison to a state national affiliate organizations as well as liaison to our K-12 brothers and sisters. I've participated in countless nice lobbying events for local and state lawmakers to lobby issues and that affect unions. And last, but certainly not least, having helped negotiate our last two contracts was not a simple job. While there may be complaints, I am proud that we were able to keep many jobs, maintain unpaid health insurance for most, get a raise and a half step. We negotiated this last contract while friends and families all around us had lost jobs and received nothing. With our current contract ending 2022, the NCCFT will begin negotiations this academic year. Time. Time. Sorry, time's up. Which is good. Now you know how the process works. Okay, so we're moving on to our first question. Our first question is, one of, the one of the major roles for the VP for non-classroom is to be able to advocate for the faculty. What are your advocacy skills? Can you give me an example of successful advocacy efforts that you were involved in? Dawn is gonna go first, then Val, and then Adam. Unmute yourself, Dawn. Okay. Thank you, I'm working on a different computer than I normally work with, so I apologize. Um, so, I believe advocating for the faculty is one of the prime jobs of any officer of the NCCFT. 
Some skills important to advocacy that I possess are active listening, tenacity, keeping a level head, and being able to think outside the box. Helping negotiate the last two contracts involved a lot of advocacy, fighting for what our members indicate were most important to them, not to us, but to them. When we were first asked to come back to campus, I walked through the Student Service Center and the library with VP Muscarella and some of his team to go over the CDC safety recommendations to ensure they were being met. I asked for some additional plexiglass and sanitizing to help protect our members in the best way that I knew how based upon the CDC um, recommendations. A more recent example is when a member shared concerns regarding the lack of QR codes in the student service sector. I brought the concern to the reinvesting task force and to VP Gonzati, and they've since been put up. I've also met with Nassau County legislators and the county exec to advocate for us, both by asking them to pass the NCC budget and for them to sign our contract. I have also visited county and state legislators to procure money for capital projects and higher, um, higher ed funding in general. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn. Okay, let's see. Um, Val? Yeah, you have seen my emails at all kinds of unsightly hours advocating for the Achilles project. As you already know, I'm not one that caves in. I will persist until the job is done. I have produced real results in fighting the administration's efforts to eliminate the program, the Achilles project. Can the other candidates give examples where they were able to reverse an administration policy that hurt members and students? When the Achilles and Aspires projects were eliminated last year, due to community support, county legislators reached out to the college to demand that the programs be institutionalized and fully restored to their original form. This was a major victory for the NCCFT membership and most importantly for our students. Just as I have advocated for our students for the past 20 years, I pledge to continue to do the same for our NCCFT members, which is what motivates me to run. Thank you. Thank you, Val. Adam? Um, my advocacy skills are based in leveraging data to inform narratives in order to arrive at more equitable outcomes. For example, in 2019, I used these skills to investigate claims of gender-based discrepancies at a national uh, organization that oversees some 200 martial arts schools. Feeling marginalized, a group of women from within the association called on board members, as well as members from various committees, to improve gender equity within the organization. Uh, while I tried to remain impartial, I was called in to investigate these claims to see if they were valid. My data analysis did find gender-based discrepancies with regards to rank and time to promotion among individuals with the same experience levels and core competency as determined and measured by the organization itself. And while the uh, organization was resistive to implementing any changes at first, uh, they slowly instituted the recommendations we made when confronted with this data. For example, they, be, uh, they, created, they started with the crea creation of a working group to explore gender and equity issues more closely. And that was followed up with a restructuring of both the board of advisors, as well as the committee that oversees promotions so that they became more representative of the uh, male and female constituents. Um, this is the exact type of informed advocacy that I would like to bring to uh, NCCFT leadership team. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the next question. Val's going to go first, then Adam, then Dawn. In what ways do you think your role or this position to serve is the same for both classroom and non-classroom slash professional faculty? And in what ways might it be different? Okay, so we're starting with that. It's the same with respect to job security, which is paramount. All members need job security and the union leaders to be their partners in fighting to, present, to prevent layoffs through department elimination or consolidation. 
They also need leadership to enforce the contract requirements for progressive discipline instead of the recent efforts to bully members to resign. The leadership also needs to support members by assuming they are non guilty and place the burden of proof on the college. The current leadership has been telling accused members that the college has a strong case without considering the members' evidence. Do you even know what's going on? Has there been transparency? I am very transparent and would be even more so if I am elected. What's different? Non-classroom are expected to be on campus 12 months. Having safe working conditions are more important. Preventing the efforts by the college to treat non-classroom members like non-professional workers, but not paying them overtime for work outside their normal working hours. There is a recurrent complaint about work overflowing, going home, and even consuming our members oh when they are at home. The problem is very real. If I'm elected, I will be accountable and transparent and work with the team to enforce the contract. Um, well, there are both overlapping and non-overlapping -over needs between classroom and non-classroom faculty. There are certain universal aspects that affect all of us, like healthcare, like shared governance, like reasonable workloads, like fair pay like funding for the college itself. Aspects most of us can agree need to be fought for and maintained. However, there are times when the needs of classroom and non-classroom faculty do not overlap, where contract concessions made by one group can have unforeseen and differential impacts on another. Case in point, the requirement to, case in point, the required to get a doctor's note after only five consecutive days of absence. It's more likely to be burdensome to non-classroom faculty or professional faculty than it is to classroom faculty, considering classroom faculty are rarely even on uh, uh, teaching classes for five consecutive days. Um, while this is just a minor example, it does illuminate how different classifications of NCCFT members can have both shared and particular interests. So if chosen to be the next uh, VP for non-classroom faculty, one of my goals will be to determine precisely where those overlapping and non-overlapping needs are so that I can more accurately reflect the voice of each and all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adam. And now Dawn. Hi. So honestly, I, I think it's very similar. I think all positions need both health and safety. We need strong contracts. We need job security. Um, I think as vice president of the classroom faculty, my job is to ensure that for all faculty members. The difference is obviously is our teaching faculty teach. They prep, they are committees, where our non-teaching faculty and professional services have very varied jobs. Um, TAs, technologists, PFUs, each have different skill sets even within the group. So for example, a, a technologist could be in IT doing data mining. Um, well, they shouldn't be doing that, but you know, data um, mm -hmm. issues. Somebody in art might be required to fix certain machines and, and know how that works. So I think they are very different. Um, I believe I could serve both faculty, that is classroom and non-classroom, um, and uh, I'm sorry, I uh, lost my place, and uh, and I think by having a varied, um, by being a TA and having varied experiences helps me be able to uh, address the concerns of both teaching faculty and uh, non-teaching professional faculty. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the next question. Oh, wait. Yeah, all three. Nope. Val, did you respond to this question? Yes. Okay. Moving on to the next question. <clears throat> what union committees have you served and in what capacity? How has that helped prepare you to be the next non-classroom vice president? 
What is the most pressing issue facing non-classroom faculty right now? And this is going to be Adam going first, followed by Dawn, and Val will conclude. Well, you won't see many people with my job title being represented on union committees. While I technically fall under academic affairs, I'm not attached to an academic department. Hence, my department does not vote on who will represent it on the executive board. Instead, I'm part of the PFU or the professional faculty unit. While the PFU is comprised of members from various departments on campus, we only have one member representing us on the executive board and, the, and in NCCFT committees. However, I've, I've served on the PFU's advisory committee for a number of terms. Uh, this is the committee that advises the PNT committee on promotion and tenure issues. While serving on this committee, I share the responsibility of reviewing promotion and tenure applications in order to determine if the criteria were being met. And if everything checked out, that application was forwarded to the PNT committee. Um, however, this role help, did help me uh, become more sensitive to the diverse roles of non-classroom and professional faculty on campus. It also allowed me to see the uh, power differentials that exist between professional faculty and their supervisors. Supervisors who at time have tried to stifle the advancement of our colleagues for personal reasons. Although all the promotions I helped recommend ultimately went through, the threat against non-classroom faculty is persistent and one of the most pressing issues we face right now. Just this last month, techno technologists who were originally hired into academic departments were transferred to ITS with less than a week's notice. And while some have said this is just a rumor, one administrator is noted as saying all technologists will report to ITS one day. Not only is this treatment disrespectful to the faculty involved, it also undermines the academic areas they're being stripped from. These were individuals who directly supported teachers and students without any bureaucratic go-betweens, an arrangement that was originally codified in order to combat the low response times and technological dictates of the now defunct MIS department. I, for one, do not want to wait and see if history will repeat itself. If chosen for this position, I will do what I can to ensure academic freedom is not replaced by ineffectual administrative bureaucracy. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Dawn, you ready? Sure. In the interest of saving time, I'm just gonna bullet the union work I've done. So I've served as my department's elected representative to the NCCFT Executive Board. I've served on both the NCCFT bylaws committee and the section uh, 58 committee. I've served as a committee member of the NCCFT's first election committee. I've served as the NCCFT's uh, political action uh, committee, first as secretary and then chair. I served as liaison to our state national affiliate organizations and our local K-12 brothers and sisters. I've served and participated on countless um, nice lobbying events. Um, I've served as a voting member of the Senate and as a Senate Dev Ed Committee. When you work on committees, you make connections with members and you need to listen. And you listen to the issues of their departments and you learn more about the very jobs and the help that gives you a deeper understanding of the challenges that members have to navigate in the various areas of the college while allowing you to get a pulse of the campus, which is needed when called upon to act. When listening to colleagues, I believe one of the major concerns is they feel they are constantly being asked to do more with less. Yes, I believe all members are being asked to do more or less, but many non-classroom people report directly to administrators who might not be as understanding as a fellow member, such as a chair. I believe another problem is the lack of understanding about what we do. If you are classroom faculty, you teach, along with your prep and your grading, et cetera. However, PFU, TA, technologists each have a different job with a unique skill set for each department. We need to ensure that the college understands that these jobs are not interchangeable. For example, a technologist from IT needs very different skills than that of a technologist from the theater and art department or chemistry. Our jobs are not interchangeable. These are some of the things that I think we need to work on. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn. Val, you're up. So I have a rich history of service to the colleagues, have served as secretary on promotion and tenure, served on sabbatical, tellers, as an alternate department representative, 
chaired retirement and was elected to represent NCC as New York State Retirement System Delegate. I was also a member of PAC, the Political Action Committee, under Dawn's leadership, but there was nothing doing. So I left to join and or form other ad hoc committees where work was actually being done. I also served on middle states and worked on standards seven and 14. In addition, I served on at least two presidential searches where I met influential people and I'm in touch with them. Also for the past 15 years, I have served as chair of the Achilles faculty training seminar. And finally, for the past 10 years, I have organized the unlo un um, annual Unlocking Potential Conference that brought educators to the college from the five boroughs, Nassau and Suffolk counties. Managing the nationally acclaimed award-winning Achilles Project, the recipient of the League for Innovation of Community Colleges Award and the Institute of Community College for Community College Development, Cornell University Grant, the ICCD. It is like running a school within a school, and that speaks volumes to my leadership ability and negotiation skills. All my experiences thus far have prepared me very well to be your vice president and classroom faculty. I have built personal relationships with members across the campus in different job functions, which would make the job very easy. My commitment to the education of all students has always been my primary goal. I have dedicated my years at NCC to assisting all students to succeed. My work at the college focuses on retaining and empowering our students. What is the most pressing issue? The most pressing issue facing non-classroom PFU presently is the college efforts to redefine, redefine the job descriptions and working conditions in the contract. Members forced to work in unhealthy office conditions, TAs being put into pools, expectations that non-classroom members are available by their personal cell phone 24 seven. Also unsafe working conditions. If given the opportunity, I would love to focus on retaining our NCCFT members. Thank you, Val. The next question, what is your vision for the NCCFT? Can you provide two specific examples of how your evidence supports this vision? So we'll have Dawn speak first and then Val and we'll conclude with Adam. Dawn, you ready? Yes, thank you. So I believe the vision or mission of any union is to uphold the dignity of their members and to preserve, strengthen and protect their contract rights. I believe to do this, the union leadership must communicate better with their members letting them know what's going on. Information is power. We also must work together to organize our members. All NCCFT members should understand, believe, and own, and feel that they are the union, not the executive committee, not the executive committee. When people know what's going on, they're more likely to get involved. We can then enlist members who have specific skill sets to help come up with solutions. For example, when we had ventilation problems, we invited Dave Stern, an NCCFT faculty member, to meet with Joe Muscarella and Richard Newman since he had expertise in that area. We have a talented faculty whose resources we have not yet tapped. Once we tap them, we will create a stronger, more cohesive NCCFT. We have plans to create cohorts of faculty from each department with the executive board rep from that department as the lead. This will allow for the dissemination of information quickly and together we can solve the problems. It takes a village and I'm hoping that the NCCFT can once again be that village. Thank you. Thank you, Dawn. Now we're moving to Val. You ready? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Um, we need leadership where a vacuum now exists. Expand college programs that serve communities' real needs, like Achilles and Aspires. Obtain these needs through members and interaction with community groups. The college's top-down approach misses the mark because the ideas come from politicians or SUNY or school superintendent, superintendent, I'm sorry, intent, you know what I mean, and not community leaders. Um, also, the top-down initiatives have been failures. 
support efforts like the two for 22 initiative to get county to support NCC with the same two to 3% annual increases like Suffolk Community College. I already have relationship with, um, with, with county legislators and was able to convince them to force the college to keep the Achilles project. I will sit down with non-classroom members and draft changes needed in contract to improve working conditions, protect non-tenured, working harder without replacements, and force the contract, the professional development plan intended to provide expectations for non-tenured. If this provision is being only one way to give work to non-tenured members, then the contract should be amended to ensure there are realistic boundaries. We must ensure that any retirements are replaced as is the practice in our sister community colleges. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Adam. Um, so I envision an MC, um, I envision NCC that incorporates data reform approaches into all its affairs. Um, while I understand the calls for more transparency during the collective bargaining process, I also know you have to keep the proverbial cards close to the vest when negotiating. However, these two don't necessarily need to be mutually exclusive. Um, through the design and use of better instruments, we can more accurately determine the primary concerns relative to each of our members and by better understanding both the commonalities and differences across our constituents, we can arrive at positions and solutions that do not stray far from the parameters they establish. Um, my experience working with uh, complex quantitative and qualitative data points support this vision. Uh, I previously gave an example of the work that I did in uh, addressing gender discrepancies at a national organization. In that case, the narrative and the data that supported it was irrefutable and led to an outcome that was beneficial for all. Um, the data analysis I've done for a student enrollment management committee also serves an example of how I've applied uh, evidence-based approaches to problems. Uh, Consider teaching faculty are often required to fill out the student progress report. Questions often arise regarding the system's efficacy. A few years ago, I provided statistical analysis on whether the system does in fact uh, does improve student outcomes. Um, if you wanna be bored with the details, just contact me directly, but long story short, the system does improve student outcomes, hence we continue to use it. Um, however, this is just meant as an example of the type of uh, scientific approach we can use to address some of our mutual problems and concerns. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're moving on to our last question. <clears throat> Hold on a minute. Sorry. Okay. How can you better protect the non-tenured faculty who are concerned that they have been working harder given the lack of rep replacement hiring of full-time faculty? Um, so first we're gonna have Val respond to this question and then Adam and then Dawn. Okay, you ready, Val? Again, the non-tenure faculty uh, will be protected when we follow the contract, when we enforce the contract. We need to have a strong approach. We must not cave in and we must protect this particular segment of our members that is the most vulnerable and the most overworked and the most abused. Thank you. Okay, next is Adam. Um, well, I was once non-tenured faculty. Non-tenured faculty work harder because of the fear of termination. I was there and I'm still there at times, even though I'm tenured, working for the Office of Distance Education as we transition to remote was a bit of a nightmare, as you can imagine. Sometimes I was working 80 hours a week. Unfortunately, the college can terminate anyone for fiscal reasons. It's in there and there's no way of getting around it. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. And non-tenured faculty are the first to go after the adjunct faculty members. So to varying degrees, we all feel obligated to work even when contractually we know we don't have to. So I don't have any solutions. I mean, I just have general ideas. First, I think it's important to limit the college's ability to play the financial card by having an intimate understanding of the budget and enrollment patterns. 
For example, last summer when the college was crying poverty, um, that was at a time when we saw a significant uptick in registration over the previous year. More students registered for classes last summer than the previous summer, yet the college was still crying poverty. Um, and second, I would recommend to non-tenured faculty, document everything you do to show your worth to the college. Your labor is providing value to the college and your document will, documentation will serve as a reminder of where you fit into the equation. Um, I also think the NCCFT uh, leadership team can do a more active role in making sure supervisors are aware of your contractual rights and their contractual responsibilities. Many supervisors are not malicious, just ill-informed. The NCCFT team should help rectify this. For example, it's important your supervisor knows to conduct your performance evaluations in a timely and professional fashion something that members of the PFU advisory committee have to deal with anytime students are um, looking, um, uh, faculty are looking to go up for a promotion. Um, uh, on a side note, I'm probably running out of time, interesting point of note, I recently learned of the academic solidarity statement, a pledge signed by 3000 academics who refuse speaking engagements and other uh, invitations from institutions that do not protect non-tenured faculty. Notable signatures include the likes of Judith Butler and Noam Chomsky. Administration should be made, administration should be made aware of the fiscal costs associated with bad PR. And thank you very much. Thank you. Um, that's all the questions. So now, oh, e oh, I'm sorry, Dawn. I know. Okay. Oh, medicine, it's medicine time. Can you tell? All right, go ahead, Dawn. <laughs> The best way to protect all our faculty is through the collective bargaining um, and our contract. As you know, a tenured appointment is an indefinite appointment that can only be terminated for course. Ordinary circumstance, financial pregnancy, um, and program discontinuation. The principal purpose of tenure, as we all know, is to safeguard our academic freedom, which we know is uh, necessary for all who teach and work in higher education. Of course, the non-tenured faculty are the most at risk. One way that we can help protect their position is to remind the college of the value of full-time tenured faculty. Remind them that tenure promotes stability. Faculty members who are committed to the institution are an invaluable asset to the college. Not only do they participate in shared governance, but they also develop ties with students and the local community, which helps increase retention and enrollment. Not to heart, but communication is very important. It needs to be two-way communication. If, if problems exist, the executive committee needs to know about them directly so that we can help and act and facilitate that if, if there's a problem. Um, those are just a few ways that I feel we can help protect the non-tenured faculty. Thank you. Thank you. And once again, Dawn, sorry about that. Okay, now, now we're moving into concluding statements. Each person has two minutes to summarize um, basically the platform that they laid out today. We're going to have Adam go first, Val, and then Dawn will go third. So Adam, are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so uh, my fast speaking was meant to cut, uh, um, cut time. And however, my response here it will uh, even... I'm truncated even more. Um, so thanks, Fendora and the members of the election committee for organizing this forum. Um, thanks for the other um, participants. Um, thanks for tuning in at night for all faculty members that are listening. I'll spare everyone and keep my comments short. Um, I'm not here to say who's more qualified to serve you as the NCCFT um, Vice President of Non-Classroom and Professional Faculty. That's for you to decide. For you to decide. Um, however, I believe that new challenges sometimes calls for new approaches, and that's what I've tried um, to be a new approach, and I hope I've provided an adequate overview of what that might look like if you choose me for the position. While it's true that uh, when we work together, we're stronger, uh, we also need to work smarter. In my opinion, our collective wealth of knowledge is unparalleled. Unfortunately, it's also underutilized. Um, I'd like to work together with you so that we can better tap into our individual and collective strengths and abilities um, to improve our working conditions and the college at large. 
Uh, there's a lot of work to be done and I'd be honored to stand up for you and lead the charge. Thank you very much and have a good night. Thank you, Adam. Next is Val. So unlike Adam, I'm the best candidate for VP for non-classroom and professional faculty. I'm credentialed and experienced. First and foremost, my doctorate in higher education administration and leadership from Columbia University Teachers College has prepared me very well. So too has my hands-on experience running the Achilles Project for the past 15 years, as well as my work with the NCCFT and Academic Senate. I have the requisite experience. I'm running to help restore ac accountability and transparency to our union and to ensure that the contract is enforced. I will work with our team to create a union that fosters collegiality, instills respect for all NCCFT members and has your back every day of the year. Cultivating these conditions will enable us to improve student enrollment and retention. I ask for your vote and would be honored to represent you and put my strong advocacy skills to work for you. There is room for improvement. Let's, let's continue to be open-minded and welcome new voices on the executive committee. Let's engage in constructive dialogue for the benefit of our NCCFT members. We all want the same thing. Thank you. Thank you, and Dawn. Thank you. Thank you again to the Tellers Committee and the Election Committee for all their hard work. Thank you for those who showed up. I know it's late and everybody wants to go have dinner. Um, I believe a good leader needs to be an active listener, care deeply for their cause, and be willing to put in the time and effort. I have these qualities. I have a deep understanding of NCC and the work we must continue to make it the best place for both our faculty and the students we teach. It has been said that the NCCFT has a Cadillac of contracts. I want to be sure the college doesn't chip away at that. If elected as NCCFT Vice President for Non-Classroom Professional Faculty, I promise to continue to work diligently on and off campus on behalf of all faculty while bringing a strong voice forward for the non-classroom professional faculty. I will take your calls, answer your emails, and meet with you when you reach out. This is a 24-7 job to someone who can put in the hours and who does not have a personal agenda other than protecting our contract and our numbers. I am that person and I hope you vote. Thank you. Thank you very much. One thing I want to point out before we leave today is we have steadily been over 70 people and we were as high as 87 people at today's um, presentations, which I think is fabulous. That means we are a union of committed people who want change. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about the candidates and voting opens tomorrow. Have a decent evening. Good night.